Welcome back as I continue to go over my top prospects for the 2022 NFL Draft class. And I know y'all been waiting for this one. We're going over running backs. And of course, if you want to see my full prospect rankings and my full big board, you go ahead, check out the Patreon. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so. Look at that. I got merch. All bro, baby. But go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. We like to have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse down there. Let's go ahead, get into the nitty-gritty at number 10. Pierre Astron, a junior out of South Dakota State. I like how he looked at the Shrine Bowl. During the game, he took all of, I think, four snaps and two touches. Had one rush, went for like four yards. Then he took a screenplay 65 yards to the house for a TD. And he was like, yep, I think my night is done here. This guy, has he, he, he's got some mileage. He's got some mileage. He's his bell cow back of old, but he's a very powerful back. He has a uh, Almost 600 carries over the course of his career, over 400 or uh, 4,200 yards, 37 touchdowns, 151 force missed tackles up in there. So not too bad, not too bad. While I say he is a powerful, patient runner, good vision too. That's what you like to see. He's not exactly a. I want. I would say breaking tackles. Like most of the time, this guy's breaking arm tackles, uh, and. I think I think when you get to the NFL level, when you get some cleaner tacklers, he'll, he'll probably go down. Probably go down. But I think this guy has a game that's very translatable to the NFL. He's got a little shimmy, little shake. May have average speed and quicks, but he's a little shifty. Little shifty at that size. 5'11", 202. But he's not afraid to make holes himself if need be. He runs your standard running back route tree. Swings, screens, and pinto beans. I don't know. I don't know. Swings and screens, though. Swings and screens. Doesn't have that home run speed. Uh, he was seldom used as a pass blocker and a receiver there at South Dakota State. But, you know, again, he, the guy took a, a screenplay 65 yards of the house. You know you could at least use him in that aspect. Shoot, this guy, he, he's thrown eight passes in his career for five touchdowns. So, that's kind of cool. But, yeah, no, I like Pierre, Pierre, man. I think he's a guy that can translate well to the NFL. At number nine, I got James Cook. If you didn't know, now you know. That's Dalvin Cook's younger brother. Though they're uh, they're not the same prospect, I'd say. Now, this season was his first time with more than 50 carries in a season. He went for 82 uh, this year. Good for you, my friend. Now, this dude gets to top speed really really quick like the dude's fast he's smooth he's a fluid athlete not real bouncy not a lot of shimmy not a lot of creativity in the way he runs typically his running style is cut go and i'm gonna run past you and that's about it that's about it that's all he got there's no creativity in how he runs he's a very decisive runner and He's very decisive that he could probably run past you. That That's how he does things. But uh, he's probably going to be one of the premier receiving backs in this class. He had uh, 13 forced missed tackles on 57 career receptions. He has a fairly good route tree. Uh, displays very soft hands. Contact balance. Let's not talk about it. This guy, I, I'm pretty sure if uh, a linebacker would breathe in his general direction, he'd probably fall over. Needs to add some weight to that frame. He, he, he a bit skinny and really goes down after the slightest bit of contact. Like I, I saw a defender get an arm on him right here and it, it looked like he got hit by a brick wall. Uh, that's the type of uh, <laughs> type of mass he needs to add. But dude's going to be a wonderful scat back, I think, in the NFL. I think he's going to test out real well. He's extremely fast, very explosive. But... That's why I got early day three. You got to understand, running back value. It ain't a thing no more. <laughs> people people know that they can get cheaper options. Late day two, early day three. James Cook would be a phenomenal addition. And then we go to number eight. I'm not excited uh, about Kyron Williams. I've been a Kyron Williams hater. But I think this running back class, there's got a few, few nice guys in here, but... 
Kyron Williams from a receiving upside, like he's probably he's up there with the top. He doesn't have like the uh, the speed or the quicks of like a James Cook. He doesn't. I want. Uh, he, he's not gonna really be this home run guy. That's just not who he is. But he's a great pass blocker, probably the best one in this class. And he does have some legit receiving skills. He took snaps out of the slot there at Notre Dame. Kind of reminds me of Demetric Felton, if you remember him at UCLA last year. It's just, I would say Williams was, I think Williams was a bit heavier, if not around the same size. Now, I would say Williams is an outstanding athlete. But I think he's a good athlete. He's got some good moves. He gets the speed very, fairly quickly. He can cut, cut that corner. And boom, boom, he's gone. But uh, I do I do have some concerns. My dad's calling me. I'm going to have to call him back after this video. I do have some concerns when it comes to... I know the offensive line. All right, I know the offensive line wasn't ideal. They lost like four starters. Four, yeah, four starters from last year. They really only brought back uh, Jarrett Patterson. And they added, they added uh, Kane Madden through the transfer portal. But still... Even dating back to last year, like his his ability, like or his production against top competition, is it hasn't been great. He only averaged about two point eight five yards after contact, only a little under two force missed tackles against teams like Clemson, who he faced twice. So I'm including this past year, Pittsburgh and Alabama. It's just it wasn't it was it, was, it wasn't that great. I don't think he's gonna be a guy that could be a consistent runner. I did worry about like his hands were a lot better in, in um as a pass catcher this past season, but he was around that ten percent dr uh, drop rate in twenty twenty. Five fumbles last year. Can't remember how much he had this year, but he started the year slow and he really got hot after week eight after he beat up the uh, beat up USC, who was kind of in coaching turmoil at that point. And uh, I think he had USC around that time too, maybe. I'm not positive. But, it, dude, no, he was really good. Three fumbles, still concerning. Still concerning. I think I don't think this is a guy you're going to want to pass the rock to quite a bit. But he is a back that you can really rely on in the passing game, on passing downs. He has that receiving upside. He actually, he run, he run, he's a good route runner. He has that pass protection. Um, he's too small to be a real bell cow, but I think he, in the right situation and the right, like running back, uh, committee, like he, there's a role for him and he will, he, he will execute that role. Wow. Phenomenally. So got him here at eight. And then at number seven, I got Brian Robinson Jr. Another guy who's going to have a role. He's going to be the short yardage back. He was a backup for the last four seasons. And never really eclipsed over 500 yards because he was stuck behind Najee. But this year, he got to be the main back, and I think he made himself a lot of money. He was sixth in the nation in force missed tackles. Dude's built like a boulder. He's very physical, very violent running style, very decisive because he doesn't really have the quicks or the uh, light feet to really have to really make moves. It's really, okay, I see it. I'm gone. I'm going. He doesn't have that home run speed. He's got thick arms, thick thighs. Like it, really if you're if you're going to choose to take down this guy, it's I'm probably going to get ran over, but at least I can be a roadblock. That's the type of run-in style, type of running back we got here in Robinson. No real receiving upside, no real speed. His longest run of the year was for 24 yards before he broke off his 63-yarder against New Mexico State. So, I'm not shaking. Oh. So, the longest run of the year was 24 yards before that. Uh, and that was actually the longest of his career was uh, 37 before that 63 yarder. Now, he doesn't do much in pass protection. He's a bit unpolished in that regard. He's, as we saw at the Senior Bowl, right? He, him and Shannon Tindell, like, he's going to punish you for wanting to come at the quarterback. But he needs to follow through. Like, he decked Chan and Tindall, but Tindall took that hit, took the momentum, spun around real fast. Like, he needs to be able to operate after that. Just You can't just lay a hit and then let it be, you know? But I think that's something he could definitely get better at. I, I, was, I was more impressed with him 
than I was with this tape in terms of pass pro, pass protection. But yeah, no, there's low mileage because this guy had to sit behind the um, sheer amount of great running backs Alabama pumps out. So the mileage is low. The tread is high. He's going to be a fabulous like short yardage uh, option, red zone option. Like Again, there's going to be a role for him in the NFL. So I got a fourth round grade on him. Number six, Isaiah Spiller. This might be the hot one. I know a lot of people are high on Isaiah Spiller. I like Isaiah Spiller. I like him a lot. I'm just not as high as some other people are. I got a late day two grade, so end of the third round there, maybe early early fourth. And the dude, he shed it about 10 pounds. Still very powerful, though. He's got good lower body strength. Still a powerful running back. But he kind of, he was already, he already had a little shimmy to him. Like he was one of those running backs that could like bang through the the line of scrimmage, get to that second level. And then he shows you a little shake. And it's like, oh, I didn't expect that from a back that was like 225. And he cut out off about 10 pounds to kind of like be more elusive in that regard. And I thought he succeeded. I thought he was he's pretty elusive for his size. He shows good contact balance. He's a plus in the passing game. I wouldn't say he's he's got your standard running back route tree, but he runs it effectively. It'd be nice to see him get his pad level a little lower. Like he runs a bit high. He doesn't ha- really have that breakaway speed. He broke off, what, about eight carries on 188 for 20 plus yards in 2020. And I think that rate was about the same this season. Uh, back in 2020, there were drops and fumbles, um, but those weren't really a factor this year. So that's good to see, but still something to keep in mind. Uh, dude, like, like he's a plus and pass pro like he's a good back i think he translates well i just think there's guys the other five guys in this, this class i think they offer a bit more in in my opinion so if you love isaiah spiller great there's just five other guys that i like a bit better starting with this guy out of byu tyler Al was it algier 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 i'm mispronouncing that let me know how you say his name in the comment section below but this cat, he looks explosive, but he's not. He's just really fast. He takes a minute to really get to full speed. He's not an explosive runner. He's this cut-and-go, no-nonsense runner. He's a former walk-on that only received a 1D2 offer in his recruitment, and the BYU managed to snatch him up. And I think he started off as a linebacker. But he's been one of BYU's best weapons the last couple of years. He has almost 400 carries for over 2,500 yards, 33 touchdowns. He has 111 forced missed tackles over that time. He's a very strong downhill runner with that home run potential. Because like I said, like he may take a minute to get up to top speed. When he gets there, though, good luck. Good luck. Now, he did deal with a lot of great blocking there at BYU. They're known for having good blocking. But the, the, the dude, he knows his strengths. He knows, all right. I'm, I got to be decisive. I'm going to cut. I'm going to go. Okay, there's the hole. Here we go. Here we go. And then he doesn't do much to avoid tacklers. He's just like, all right, good luck. I'm running fast. Hopefully you can pull me down. Like he loves contact. He relishes it. Loves it, dude. He won't. He won't. He, he, may, he may merely swerve a little bit when if a guy squares up on him. But I think that's just to lower the shoulder. I really think that's all it is. Like. All right, I'm gonna go. No, 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 no. You're you about to. You see this? It's about to be in your mouth. You're about to eat this. Very, very effective, man. Because like, like, it's literally like a, like a, a highway crash. He's that. He's that man. Uh, I do like like. Okay, listen. He offers about like he runs the basic running back tree. Um, Swings, screens, his average depth of target was actually behind the line of scrimmage, so not surprising. But I like what he does in pass protection, and I like that he's been very, very, he's been used a ton on special teams day and back when he used to be a linebacker. Like he has special team experience, he brings that to the table. I like that. That means this guy's going to see the field early. But yeah, I think that gives him a leg up. Uh, fumbles were a concern in 2021. So that might be a thing. There's no real switching gears with him. Like I said, he's running right through you. It's not like 
he doesn't have that start stop ability, but I really like this cat. Got a third round grade on him. And then number four is my boy Jerome Ford. By the way, congratulations. I think he had a baby girl. I have my own baby girl. So good for you, man. I'm good for you. You about to hit the NFL, and I'm really high on you. Uh 510, 209 is what he measured at at the senior bowl. Um, I put receiving upsides kind of a weakness here, but to be fair, I thought he looked better at that at the senior bowl on day one. I thought he looked a bit better. And then keep in mind, this guy transferred from Alabama to 219. There's a pedigree in 2019. There's a pedigree here. This guy, he is a very, very patient runner. He shows great vision. He's another guy that's a cut and go type of guy. Uh, he's very light on his feet with his jump cuts. He accelerates very well through the hole. And unlike most power backs, because this is another guy that can that has good contact balance um, to some degree. We'll get to that in a minute. But he has breakaway speed. Like, he had a lot of home runs this year for Cincinnati. Uh, before he went down with injury, I think he was, he was 11th in the nation in forced missed tackles. He ended up finishing 22nd but because he, he had to miss a few games. But dude, dude is good. Dude is good. He has that mentality where you'll search out the big play. Fumbles were a concern entering the year as he had three in 2023 on only, uh, or 2023. He had three in 2020 on only 73 carries. However, he is, he only had one on the season where he had this past season where he had 161 carries. So I like that. Now there are inconsistencies with his contact balance, and I think a lot of that stemmed from how terrible the offensive line was there at Cincinnati, where there were times where well, he was getting hit in the backfield. So uh, I don't really think that's a... Uh, I, I I like his contact balance. There's guys with better better contact balance. For me, that's kind of like a... That's one of my one of my favorite things is contact balance and force missed tackles when it comes to running backs. So I don't think that's going to be an issue, especially if he's behind at least a average to above average offensive line. But I think he's a guy to look for. Like he has, I think, good power for a guy with his type of home run ability. And then number three, Damian Pierce out of Florida. The tread is low with Pierce. Or he's got a lot of tread on his tires, low mileage. That's one thing I do like about him. Uh, he's a very good receiving back. Over the last two seasons at Florida, he had 35 receptions for 373 yards, four touchdowns, 18 forced missed tackles on that. Uh, five of his catches were on passes of 10 plus yards. So he's actually out there going and running routes. Uh, he has good body control. He just well to the ball in air, though he's more of a body catcher. I really wish there was more ball skills involved with him, but which there were like he can make catches outside his body uh just he had a really bad bad drop at the senior bowl where it just hit him in the chest and bounced out but for the most part like i he's 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 got the receiving upside he's got he's good in pass pro i like the contact balance the center of gravity is stupid low at 59 220 um i wouldn't say he's up there with Kyron Williams as one of the best best pass box blocking backs in this class but i'd say he's definitely like top five uh he had a he, he's very good at just shrugging off and shoving contact 39 force missed tackles on 87 carries uh he has good acceleration um once he kind of finds a hole he's good at planting and going there were instances though where i say footwork i really mean like where he just kind of slipped off his planting foot so i don't know if you want to blame that to like the humidity down there in Florida, the soft grass. I don't, I'm not going to do that. So I think that's something a bit, a uh, bit he could work on, but from like, he's got average burst, average speed. By no means is he like, he's not like uh Khalil Herbert coming out last year who had this low center of gravity, but he also had like home run speed, but I like the contact balance. I think, um, he, I, I like he's kind of no nonsense. He d doesn't get too bouncy in the backfield. I like what he could do from a receiving standpoint. And I think we saw a bit of that in Mobile um, a couple of weeks ago. So I got Damian Pierce at three. Brees Hall at number two. This cat is so good at creating 
something from nothing because Iowa's offensive line was one of the worst run blocking offensive lines in football. He had what? He was fourth in college football and forced missed tackles. He shows good contact balance. Um, he's got a very sturdy base. Uh, not a lot of people really talk about his. I think I think he's got decent explosiveness. He's not exactly like his burst isn't exactly great, but I think it's plus for a 220, uh, 220 pounder. Um, I think he shows a lot of big play potential uh, throughout his career. But I like this guy. He runs a bit high, is what it is. I, I feel like that's something you could really, really teach a bit better. It's just I feel like that's that's just coaching at the next level. It's real easy. Hey, run low. But dude's a bell cow. He's been a bell cow for Iowa State. He was one of the most, uh, I kind of brought this up earlier, one of the most... Uh, often hit behind the offensive or behind the line of scrimmage backs in all of the nation they did a horrendous job but again this dude created something from nothing he runs the basic running back running back uh, route tree but he does it extremely well just because of how tough he is to bring down because it takes more than one guy just to bring Brees hall down i like that a ton and I can't wait to see how he tests out of the combine. I think that's going to be dope. And then, of course, my number one is Kenneth Walker. He made a he was a had a hell of a year, had a hell of a year there for Michigan State. He's a former Wake Forest transfer. Uh, he led all of college football in forced missed tackles at 92. And if you didn't know who number two was, it was Malik Willis. <laughs> now he's great uh, getting through contact. He has a little shimmy, a little shake, a little wiggle. I like that. Shows good contact balance. I uh, love his uh, his patience and vision as a runner. He's explosive. He's elusive. He runs uh, a lot of NFL rushing concepts there at uh, there at Michigan State. So he's going to see a lot of similar uh, concepts in the NFL. Just the combination of power and speed, explosiveness. I think it's just going to do well for him at the next level. Like, the only real question about him is he didn't do anything on passing downs for Michigan State. He didn't wasn't used on pass protection a lot. He didn't really see a lot of, like, uh, he wasn't used a lot as a receiver. So that's kind of a question. Uh, if we're really going to nitpick him, like, okay, he doesn't have elite power or speed. But it's for me, it's above average. It's good enough. It's a good, for what he has, like, he has a good combination of that, like, this cat's, I think, it's going to be really good at the next level. I think Javante Williams is a good, not necessarily like, I don't want to say comp, but I see a bit of Javante Williams. Um, what I really liked about Javante last year, I kind of, I see that in Walker. So Walker is my top back with the second round grade because, I don't know, you know, running backs, if they're not B. John Robinson, I'm probably not going to have a first round grade on them. But let me know who are some guys you probably thought should have been included. I'm sure you got a ton of them. That's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.